Professor Chris Marshall. Chris, thank you very much for uh, talking to us. And congratulations on your what, Lifetime Achievement Awards. I suppose you feel a bit ambivalent about uh, Lifetime Achievement. The inference is that you've, well, you've done that. I think you've hit the spot there, Gordon. <laughs> um, like most scientists, I'm actually more interested in the future rather than the past. Exactly. So. You have, it's a mixed blessing, a Lifetime Achievement Award, but I, you know, of course I'm well, very pleased to have received it and you know, it's a reflection of the work of the people who've been with me. Sure, it's and a lot of them too. Uh, you uh, tend to dwell on uh, three-letter words uh, <laughs> and you know, a lot of the past achievement was RAS. Um, and sum that up in two minutes. What are you proudest well, of in, in RAS? <laughs> You can not only say it's three letter words, but it's also very small proteins. It is so indeed. <laughs> 200 you amino once. acids. <laughs> um, I think what we're most proud of is the work which we've done in you know, elucidating how RAS proteins function. And that led to some very, very promising therapeutic targets and, uh, and drugs, uh, one of which is now in the clinic. It's not our work. You know, we put that, the science out into the in, in, into the scientific uh, media and people pick up on it yep. and take it away and do very good things. So I'm very proud of the way we've catalyzed those sort of activities. I mean, you've always worked with clinicians, however. I mean, you've, you've never taken your eye off the, the end game, which is to make patients better. Um, and you're now working on row, another yep. three-letter word. Is it just yep. a shorter? <laughs> no, the reason why is that um, one of the problems which I've been interested in ever since I started my career in, in cancer research over 40 years ago is um, what is it that allows tumour cells to invade, disseminate? Yeah. It's the major clinical problem, invasion and metastasis. And although the RAS proteins are probably pretty important in, in what they do in invasion and metastasis, What's really interesting is a, a family of closely related proteins called Rho, which are regulated in very similar sort of ways to the RAS proteins, but they coordinate different processes in the cell, and they're very much to do with cell shape and the ability of cells to, to change their shape and move. So we think these are very interesting proteins in cancer. How do they do cancer. that? They affect the cytoskeleton? They affect or? the cytoskeleton. They regulate the dynamics of the actin cytoskeleton and they also interface with microtubule structures. So mm -hmm. they're absolutely poised to, um, to coordinate these processes. And the whole field was invented by my colleague Alan Hall in the late 80s at the Institute of Cancer Research when Alan decided it was Marshall, time to move from RAS to RAS. Mar Marshall and Hall used to be like Marks and Spencers to me yes. when I was a boy. It was a fabulous co collaboration and we yep. still went on for 12 years and we're still great friends. I'm um, not quite sure what switches row on or what might switch it off. Yes, well, the, as I say, the regulation is very much like the, the RAS proteins. The switch is on what we call the guanine nucleotide exchange factors, the GETs, and the switch is off the GAPs, the, the GTPase accelerating proteins. And one of the fascinating things is that the row family itself has about 20 proteins in, but there's five times or more uh, of these GEFs and GAPs and there are row right. proteins. So there's a lot of complexity in the signaling. We're beginning to get hints that the expression of some of these regulators is altered in cancer. To my m knowledge yet, no one has really identified mutations in them. Mm -hmm. So they're probably going to be regulated by other mechanisms. Extracellular mechanisms? Or no? The extracellular mechanisms, that's been one <laughs> of the things which we've been most interested in. Mm -hmm. In, in the last couple of years, and, and that is, what is it that feeds into the, uh, the rho protein signaling from the outside environment? We know it's the environment which would determine how cells move. And uh, one of our recent stories is the importance of cytokines, presumably generated by inflammatory environment in tumors, mm -hmm. activating rho signaling pathways to um, make cells move. Well, what activates that? What activates that? Well. That's a very interesting question about why the environment of so many tumours is, is highly inflammatory, why you've got recruitment of macrophages, why you've got lymphocytes, recruitment of myeloid lymphocytes, cells, yeah. myeloid cells, everything that you can think of. Um, I don't think we've got all the clues yet as to why that happens, but it very clearly does happen. And increasingly we know this is a very important driver of cancer, not only in cell migration, invasion, 
but also um, cell proliferation and survival. Sure. The well, it's actually are very important. That's actually what cancer patients die of. Uh, what's the latest on push and pull in terms of you know a breast cancer cell moving to an auxiliary lymph node? Right. Is there a niche? Is there a sort of chemotactic type of signal? Do you think, or is that just I think blah blah? I think there's probably a bit of both, right? Right. and I think um, part of it in, in tumor metastasis, tumor spread, may be a sort of shotgun approach. You know, cells get cells start to move. They may move at random. Um, they eventually find the right place where you know uh, they can intravasate. Um, what allows their survival in the lymphatics and the, the bloodstream, I think, is another mm. very interesting open question. But then there may be chemotactic signals when they actually get to sites, which you know ensure that they stay in that in that in that niche and um, don't move on and don't move on. Because mm -hmm. that's interesting. Though. I mean, there's a recent data on that model with the Sentinel node uh, positive uh, uh, patients with breast cancer um, who have just the Sentinel node involved. And um, essentially, uh, their outcome is exactly the same as yeah. the patient who've got no nodes. Yeah. And so there is, has to be some mechanism for holding yeah. these things back. And it's not just a sieve, is it? Well, well it might be a sieve. I mean, one of the things which we've noticed, and we, we need to extend this, is that um, we've noticed that in some of the studies on melanoma that the morphology of the cells, the shape of the cells in the lymph node can actually be quite different mm -hmm. from the shape of the cells in the, in the primary tumour. And that suggests a number of things. Those cells could be genetically different. Yeah. We think also it's probably that it could also be a reflection of the microenvironment in, in the lymph node drives different dynamic rearrangements of the actin cytoskeleton to give the cells different shapes. And that actually, they might inhibit the spread mm -hmm. of the cell. Have you got a candidate for a push signal within a cancer cell? Do you you mean, haven't got mutations yet of Rho, but no. other things. No. But RAS, I mean, of course, might yeah. be. A, I mean, well, we know a number of the components of the, of the Rho signaling pathway are actually upregulated mm -hmm. uh, by oncogenic RAS signaling. And that's actually how we got in to this mm. whole thing, is um, trying to understand the links between oncogenic RAS and, um, and Rho signaling. Because in certain situations, if you put oncogenic RAS into the cells, it makes them highly motile. Yeah. And that's what we were originally trying to understand. Does Mick do that too? Uh, I don't know. Okay. It might do. Mick seems to be involved in everything. It seems it to pop up all over yes. the damn place. Chris, thank you very much indeed for um, Gordon. telling us about Raw. And congratulations once again. And I trust that you've got a bit more lifetime to come. We Thanks. hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you. we'll never sort out Raw signaling. Oh, if no, there's plenty of other people t uh, taking up the baton, so it'll be fine. Thank Thanks you. very much, Chris. Thank you.